Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Didsbury Art Studio and I'm Sally. And in today's video, what we're going to get straight into is using crinoline fabric, which is used in millinery. And I'm going to show you one use of how to use it. All right then, let's get straight into it. So I'm using some crinoline here, which is seven inches wide. And I bought this from Etsy and it's three meters long. Just showing you that the feel of it is quite sturdy and strong. And I'm going to pull the drawstring at the bottom of the crinoline. And I'm pulling about eight inches there. And then I'm gonna fold in the crinoline. And as I hold it, I'm gonna wrap that around with the draw thread. And I'm making some loops as I go along to tie it really sturdy. And I'm gonna put a few knots in and that's just gonna hold all that little frayed edge together. Once I've done that side, I'm going to jump over to the other end and I'm going to pull that draw thread again. And as I pull, pull, pull it, sorry, it's going to gather the crinoline along and you could just get some little pleats in there and gathers. And literally that's going to take me some time just pulling that thread along. Until it is all gathered like so. Once I've got to the other end, I'm going to scrunch up that end bit like I did before. And I'm going to cut off the excess thread there and just use it to tie around that bit I've created. A few knots and that will hold together. I've just shown you there that I've got a um, a base hat which is seven inches wide. It's made of cinema and I bought those bases, didn't make them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin down one end and it can be quite fiddly. You can see that I'm just putting a few pins in as I go along. So you go through the crinoline and through the cinema base there. And if you need to use a thimble at this point, you can do to make sure you don't hurt yourself by pricking your finger with the pins. And you just continue to put your pins through the fabric. And you decide really where you want those gathers and just manipulate the fabric to make it how you want it to be. So now that I've pinned it all down, I'm going to get some thread. I've just got some blue thread to match the crinoline. You can use invisible thread. I'm going to thread it up double thickness, tie a knot at the opposite end to the needle quite a chunky knot and I am going to come up through the back and start at the beginning with a couple of tacking stitches just in and out of the base and the fabric just tacking up and down just a couple of stitches each time where the pins are 
and I'll just work my way around. Each time I do a couple of tacking stitches in one place, I will tie a knot onto the back of the base. and then I'll restart in another position. And you can take the pins out, as you can see I'm doing, as you go around, that's what I'm pointing out there. So take those out once you've tacked them. And then really, I'm just having a look from all angles about how it's positioned and exactly whether I'm happy with where the fabric is positioned. I'm putting a couple more stitches in the middle there. And you can actually sew through a couple of the layers of the crinoline. It's not too thick. wrestle there with the uh, ladle of the cat and then I'm going to try it on my mannequin head and I'm just sort of putting it on the side of the mannequin head just because I, I really like that angle and it's really pretty massive <laughs> the fabric isn't it so now what I need to do is just Start playing around with the fabric. Start popping in pins where I want the fabric to fold, bend, whether it's going to be twisted. What it looks like from the front. Whether I want it sort of higher in parts. And you can gather it in like I'm doing there. And then I'm going to pop a pin in it to hold it down whilst I'm still looking at whether I like it or not at this stage. So it's just a bit of a process really. So I'm getting to the point where I quite like it. I'm thinking that there's a bit too much fabric at the back there. So I'm just going to sew all of those areas that I've pinned down and any bits of fabrics that I want to sort of sew together. I'm just tidying up all the edges. Tickle for Layla. Tickle, tickle, tickle. She comes back in a minute to uh... oh, <laughs> bite me. Look at that. I'm kicking up a fuss with her paw. <laughs> She's funny. So, yeah, we're very nearly there. Just got the last bits of stitches to add. And I'm trying to make the stitches very small so that they're not going to be seen too much. And I've got these little dried flowers in blue, which I thought would be quite nice to pop in the centre to cover up a couple of the stitches in the middle. I've got three there. But I'm not sure, so I take one out. It's not working certainly doesn't work there at the front. Does it work at the back? 
No. And then next up, I've got my hot glue gun and I'm just going to put a little bit of the glue on the stalk and pop it down in the places that I want them to go. Quite like that. Nice and subtle. And then next, what I'm doing here is I've got a pair of tweezers and I'm holding a little gem that's flat on the back and I've popped a little bit of glue onto the gem and I'm going to disguise the little tacking stitches with these little blue gems. I'm only putting a few on because I don't think I want it to be too bling. But it certainly does the job. And I'm just twisting it around to see how those gems look in the different places. I put quite a few on one area. And you just need to make sure you hold down the gem with the glue so that it's pretty secure. So I just wanted to show you that I was using these little gems when I was using my tweezers and I was just covering up some of the spots where I've tacked some of the fabric. I'll show you that there are other ways of using the crinoline. And you can see with this hat that I've made here, I've used a shorter crinoline, which I've just sewn to this straw brim and then just rippled it to make these little pleats. And then I've hand stitched those onto the base of the hat. And I've also used this larger crinoline and sewn it behind. So it makes quite a dramatic effect. And then I've added on some of the quills. That's one way. And then another way that I've done this one in the past too, you'll probably see this one on Instagram. I do love this one. This one is, I love the colour, first of all. And then also just using the crinoline on top of the design that I've done there. And then that's how I'd wear it. Like that. Looks like a set of rollers there, doesn't it? But I do love it. So yeah, you can use the layered effect as well. Ta -da! So thank you so much for watching my video today and if you enjoyed it do give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already done so and if you'd like more free content like this then that's the way to go. See you shortly, bye!